In this episode, we hope to share some thoughts that will bring you a lot of massive, deep, true comfort for your soul. This episode is being released on the morning of November 6, 2018, the date of one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime. I'm Sienna. And I'm Toast. With each episode of this podcast, our goal is to help our fellow LGBT community members lift their lives to the next level. Hey, everyone. Hello, and thanks for your listening. I was going to say tuning in, like old style radio. They are tuning in. Tuning in. Sort of. Okay. All right. How's everyone feeling today? Well, we're feeling, feeling historic. Toast. I'm feeling historic. Are you feeling historic? Yeah. Do you feel on edge? Big time, big time. A little bit, but in a mm. good, you know, it's in a that's good way. life, right? Yeah. It's part of life. It's not a, it's not a discomfort that you're like, get me out of here. It's like okay. I'm moving through it. Yes, yeah, that's growth. That's right, right? Okay, so thanks for listening to the podcast today. Our quick shout out goes to an Instagram account, and this Instagram account belongs to Pokey and Juno. So cute, two brother and sister kitties and their instagram is adventures of pokey and juno they are so cute and, and they found out about them we did because their meow me so their mommy their meow me wore get it, get it. <laughs> so cute <laughs> so cute the cat language I meow me know. the potty <laughs> the potty the party, the potty. Um, anyways, they're me, they're me, they're meow me, they're mommy, <laughs> they're meow me. <laughs> Wore our Sienna and Toast Love Wins cumin t shirt when she went out canvassing just the other day. Yay! Yay! And for those of you Great. who may not know, cumin is the name of our cat who passed away, but Sienna did a uh, drawing of her a cartoon style drawing and one of the drawings features cumin plus a bunch of other cartoon cats holding up a flag a rainbow flag they're real cats like they belong like we know these cats they are cartoons of cats that we have known yes and the flag that they're holding up says love wins yay so that's the design so thank you pokey and juno for your message uh, we're so happy that your Meow Me loved the shirt. In fact, she bought three shirts, which was nice. So and it, nice. And it was so cool because it was part of her canvassing uniform. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like in the days prior to the election, it. she wore it out to she go canvassing here the in Oregon. Message. I think it's awesome. Love wins. Yes. So um, we also posted it posted the picture oh, of the, the shirts. shirts themselves yeah because yeah. okay so here's what what happened let's just back up a little bit so our friends jen and laura who are a couple opened up a cat themed gift store in portland on one of the uh the like artsy cool hip streets in portland called the alberta arts district and their store is called roar and they have if you love cats, you just have to go to that store because it's not purely um, like cat supplies. Like, you know, they do have cat beds, cat toys, cat collars, and fun cat items. For cats. For cats. But they also have things for cat lovers, which I think makes their store really unique. Like clothes and magnets Because yeah, they're not like a pet supply and store, stickers, really. And they're yeah. not purely a gift store. But and anything candles. and everything cats. Yeah. So super fun. So they were so kind. They liked our t-shirt. They said, hey, we want to carry the shirt. So it's great. They they picked which one. And we had a lot of fun putting their order together and putting little tags on it. And you'll see in the Instagram account. But when we posted it, we had some, some nice little um, comments. So I'll just read a few. So... We have things like, how cute is that? Love these. Um, there's also one that says, this shirt is everything good in the world. Mm. I love that one. That one's <laughs> nice. And 
cute design. I'll check it out. All these really cute things. So it just showed us that love wins is a message that so many people can stand behind. But it also says there are a lot of cat people in this world and on our Instagram account. We're in the cat Instagram bubble. Well, we're in an animal bubble. Cats and oh, around the cat. Cats are just uh, cats easier. at the center of that <laughs> bubble. Cats are at the center. Cats, yes, lesbians, true. right? Cats, it's, lesbian, yeah. vegan food. Put us in that box. That's fine. There are stereotypes, and we're fine with that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. All right, gotta toast. have a sense of humor and just laugh at yourself sometimes. Well, you know? yeah. Okay, <laughs> so toast. Yes. Why don't you? Why don't we just get into it? Oh, okay. I've been, okay, so everyone, just so you know, I've been a little resistant um, about talking about the election, but the way that Toast shared some notes with me today and the way that she is bringing the election to the table, I completely stand behind. And so we're doing this episode today. Okay. You know what would what be a good are you staring? Okay, Why because are you I know that you're not like in a well zony zombie way. <laughs> and being a creep. <laughs> Here's the thing. Drink. Here's the thing. What? I know that you're not anti talking about the election specifically. I know that politics in general is a touchy, troubling, kind of thorny topic and subject, right? So Perhaps for me, yes. Well, let's and clarify. there are various reasons for that. Yes, right. So maybe we can talk about that in a future episode about like why. No, why my hair stands why? up like whenever. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> why your hair starts lifting? Yes, yes. We can talk about that on another episode. Sure. Okay. okay. Sure. I I'm might need a break, that though. down. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I might need a break. Okay. But, um, but anyways, okay, so today, let's talk about today. Today's an important day. Depending when you're listening to this, this is actually, this episode is coming out on election day, November 6th. Mm -hmm. um, but Toast, why don't you go into some of the thoughts you had okay. that actually really bring it home for brought it home for me i think it'll be helpful for the listeners okay. and i thought it was really comforting okay and that's the whole point so here we go first thing is to acknowledge that facing the reality of our situation as a nation right now is discomforting Yes. It is discomforting. Yeah. Let's just acknowledge that. Yes. And accept it instead of trying to run away or or pretend that, oh, no, it's all good and we'll rise above it and it's all going to be fine in the end. So there's nothing to worry about and don't worry, you know. No, I think facing the reality of the situation is discomforting. And I think that is a healthy response to be aware of that, to acknowledge it and be aware of it. The discomfort? Yes. Mm. But that's our spiritual work, is to reckon with that. Yeah. And how do we know that? How do we know that that's our spiritual work? It's because we're here. <laughs> that, whole, that whole cliche of, of spiritual development and yeah. the work of growing Whatever situation we find ourselves in, whether it's relationships or with issues with money or issues with health, that's our family assignment. or yeah, it's like that is that, our assignment. That's our assignment. That's our divine homework. Exactly. Divine homework. That's yes. our mission. Because to otherwise help us grow. we wouldn't have that experience. So we so. each have so because so otherwise have, we'd be just floating around and not connected to anything well, and be unconscious motes of dust but with then, no thoughts. Oh, you're talking if we didn't choose to be human. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. yeah. But we, I think we each 
come individually, we have our own individual assignments Mm -hmm. and the wounding and things like that, that we've mentioned in previous podcasts that we come to this lifetime Mm -hmm. to heal, to grow from and all of that. But collectively, so you're speaking about collectively as a nation, we are experiencing this discomfort and that's why we know we are here we're all experiencing this this is part of our reality and so therefore this is part of our whoops (laughs) hold on people (laughs) sorry about that so therefore this is our spiritual work because as a nation we are collectively experiencing this yes okay i would it's an it's a national situation and it's an individual situation but I guess I wrote these thoughts out as I was thinking of myself personally and just mm. observing my own reaction and response yeah. to the situation. So after admitting like, okay, yeah, it's discomforting, but this is my spiritual assignment, apparently, right? I'm here. Mm. Then I kind of had to admit to myself that sometimes it really just feels annoying. Mm. Yeah. You know, because... There's that part of me that just, can't I just live a nice, comfortable life? Yeah. Right? I mean, because so much, because we have a lot of emotional energy. Around it. Around it. Yeah, around what's happening. And you see what's happening. Having reactions, trying not to be reactive. Right. And trying to balance. Work through, oh, what's the best response Mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. Uh, and being so frustrated or feeling so helpless right? and just ready to rage out because, well, we all know why. The list goes on. I mean, that's not what this episode's about. Um, but just admitting that sometimes I, I wish, yeah, I just... I. There's that part of you that just wants to just want to live a comfortable life and I just want to minimize the pain and maximize the pleasure. And why do I have to? Oh, my gosh. You know, and 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 expressing that and saying those things out loud when there are so many things that we as citizens need to show up for in order to fix the situation here. Right. Admitting those thoughts is is kind of embarrassing and feels like, oh, my gosh, that sounds so selfish. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. uh But I think, though, if we're being honest, we do have those thoughts that cross our mind. Yeah. Like, wow. Um, Yeah, I just want to be comfortable and stuff. But the next thought that follows on after that is, well, not really. Because even though on one hand you can say, you know, I just want to be comfortable and stuff. If you dig deeper, really, what... We really want, even more than that, is to be part of a great story. We want to be Mm -hmm. part of something meaningful. We Mm -hmm. want to be part of something significant and deep and important and valuable. We want to be a part of a great love story. Something that's epic. And I know that sounds so grandiose. Right, chick flicks. (laughs) Oh romantic God. comedies no well i mean i hear what you're saying well i hear okay. what you're saying okay because and the reason and that's i i i agree yeah but i think that so why do you think but, though yeah. that people have this feeling like oh i just want to be comfortable enough of this already and yet what's deeper is wanting to be a part of this great story that's really the deeper desire Versus the desire, the surface desire of wanting to just be comfortable and enough of all this stuff already. Why do you think those people don't seem to be in touch with this deeper desire of wanting, of truly wanting to be a part of this greater love story? Okay, well, I, I'm about to get to that. Oh, but right. before that, Not leading before up to that, that. I okay. just wanted, I wanted to say, <laughs> well, okay, we do want to be part of this some kind of great thing, something mm-hmm. bigger than ourselves, right? Okay. But the reason I say we know that is because even in the things that we go to for supposedly pure entertainment, mm-hmm. 
those things hook us in because of the drama and the special effects and the animations and graphics. And I'm, what I'm thinking of is stuff like when sports, you know, I mean, the Super Bowl has jet planes flying overhead, mm-hmm. right? It's a football game. Right. But they turn it into this big, huge, epic thing. And like the TV show, The Voice, when the chair, the, it's not just a chair turning around. It's, <laughs> and the chair turns around. <laughs> you know, we want, there's, so even our entertainment, and, and you even see this on social media and the news, mm. it's all sensationalism. It's like biggie size. That's like what, a super size. Yeah, it's, and, and that is what pulls us in, right? It's part of our evolution to, to pay attention and to want to be part of something that has this grandness to it. But, like you said, why do we not... Why do we settle for stuff that's not grand? Why do we instead go to, oh my gosh, I just want to be comfortable, <laughs> right? I, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I, I think that is part of the spiritual journey. I think that's part of healing ourselves spiritually because in order to accept your role mm-hmm. and your part in the story, it's a combination of accepting responsibility, which has some gravity to it. You have to grow up, you know, and there's a resistance, I think, to that. But at the same time, there's also a sense of some level of importance attached to that. And mm-hmm. I think the... the maybe undernourished spirit and soul in us Mm -hmm. doubts our own significance Mm. so we kind of hold back and it's almost like yeah can can we stand to recognize ourselves as part of a great story that's actually happening right now that we are a part of whether we agree to it or not we're Mm. here we mm-hmm. were born, mm-hmm. you know, and th- this country was founded and changed the face of government on this planet hundreds of years ago. We are here now. We're part of, we are part of the story. But I think kind of taking that bird's eye view of it. Uh, for no, no, number one, I think that also requires a degree of solitude, some time and space mm. to step away and not allow yourself to get wrapped up in all the controversy and scandal and what's the latest breaking news. Yeah. You know, that, and not that that's not that you should ignore that. You, we as citizens, we should educate ourselves and be in touch with what's happening because that is part of our responsibility. But I think also part of our responsibility is to cultivate and maintain a degree of equilibrium in our spirit so that we can kind of take a bird's eye view now and then. And for me, it doing that does comfort me. Mm. It does give me a sense of perspective and that feeling of not on one hand, it's not, I, I'm not expected to fix everything, <laughs> but on the other hand, I am expected to participate and use the voice that I do have, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, it, it sounds like what you're saying is sort of like that other podcast we did about, you know, everything that happens, you might not know why it's happening because we don't have that more divine perspective Mm -hmm. on the full terrain. Mm -hmm. So like even what's happening politically, you know, we can't, we have to be informed, but we can't allow ourselves to just get all wrapped up and, 
and reactive to every single thing that's happening, every twist and turn that's happening, because that's happening on one level. Everything that, that is happening that we see on the news, that's happening on one level. But if we can just, like you're saying, take a breather, take a break, look at the landscape, take on another view. And it might not be the absolute divine perspective because we don't often have that part yet. But if we can take another broader view and just realize, okay, this is part of a bigger story here. We are part of this great love story that you mentioned earlier. We are part of this. We are writing the story. We're part of writing this story. Mm -hmm. Then we can have a little more comfort in, okay, that what is happening that inspires such reaction in us and initially provides discomfort, that what is happening is actually part of something that is going to be greater. Yeah. Or that is greater and that it is up to us to do the work to help transform the story, transform what's happening. Right. It's like this, yeah, like the story has come down from... The thousands of, of years that it right. took to evolve right. for, for the human species even to evolve in consciousness to produce the, the form of government that has at its core, in the philosophy of its core is, can we create a community where each individual is free to develop themselves spiritually? Mm. Or are we going to impose a religion? Mm-hmm. You know, are mm-hmm. we going to restrict uh, certain types of speech and behavior and stuff like that? No, we, well, let's create a community where, where every individual can explore their own spirituality mm. and develop themselves to the full extent. And it took thousands of years for humanity to, to develop this form of this government. Yeah. And now it's in our hands. Yep. And, and give it a few more decades, it's going to be out of our hands. Mm. You know, we're just part of this small little paragraph of it. And yeah. This huge, huge story. Um, and that gives me some comfort mm. taking that perspective. The other thing, too, that really uh, inspires me, I guess is going back to the founding document, going back to the Declaration of Independence and realizing right there in black and white, in actual words in that declaration is the presence of a sense of the sacred. Mm -hmm. It's a declaration about divine providence and sacred honor. Mm. It's not about winning or getting our way it's not about accumulating more. There's a sense of wanting to do what's right, what, what they thought was just. And, of course, we got to acknowledge and admit, okay, nobody's perfect. Yes, there were slave holders, slave owners who signed that document. But that's part of the evolution. Right. I mean, look where we are now. We're farther along, but, but we're not it perfect. Ain't perfect. Yeah, and we're all <laughs> working every step along the way. Yep. But that really, that really hardened me. Like the last, the last part of the Declaration of Independence, the very last sentence says, "And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor." Mm. The fact that. They even put the word sacred in a government document. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you, like, do you think that the words divine and sacred had the same kinds of meanings that it has for us today? Like, do you think that? Good, good Lord. I'm sure. I mean, the I don't meaning, know. Yeah. Just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm, the meaning. I wonder about that. Yeah, I'm know? sure the meaning evolved, right? And the, yeah. the, the types of phrases and speech that was used. But it's. It's undeniable that the motivation and the vision mm. for forming the vision. this, yeah. yeah, for forming this nation, for forming this country, was rooted in a sense of what is 
just? What is righteous? What's yeah. the righteous thing to do? Another section of the Declaration of Independence says, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions. Mm. You know, we do declare that blah, blah, blah. But just appealing to the supreme judge of the world. I love how they don't say God, right? Supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions. Rectitude means morality. Rectitude means an interest in righteousness. And what is right? In other words, they're declaring that we are doing this. We are making this declaration. We are making this move and this effort to form this type of government and community and nation because we believe it's the moral thing to do. Mm -hmm. And just refreshing myself with that through line of how America started yeah. is very comforting. Yeah, you know, that's, I think that's, those are really great thoughts. And it's getting me to think. Like, I totally hear what you're saying. And I think that, yes, absolutely. Like, there is this beautiful sacredness and you can feel that in the intention um, that comes through with the uh, Declaration of Independence. You can feel that, not only in just the verbiage that they use, but just there is this feeling of it. And so you bringing that up as evidence that we are part, just a part of this greater story, this landscape. You know, what I wonder though is even though we have this evidence that the intention of our forefathers, right? The intention that they had that was infused with all of this goodness. We have veered off so far mm. <laughs> as a nation today. Mm -hmm. So how can we trust? Like what thoughts come up for you that, that can help us to trust that those divine intentions for the nation still live on i mean or are you saying that that is our our spiritual work to trust to trust in that well i think that at the founding and throughout the entire history not just of this country but of mankind it's a mixed bag right yeah, yeah. <laughs> even within ourselves we we have this struggle we have this conflict we have inner conflict the part of ourselves that wants to do some or like how we said the part of our the greater part of ourselves that want to move us forward and then the part that wants to hold us back right there's right. this conflict yeah. yeah so i i consider the declaration of independence to be one of our country's sacred documents mm. and it does embody and express the most noble intentions of yeah. the human spirit but that's a that, good way to put it but that doesn't mean that the people who wrote it or, or signed it were all good i know right? but then how do we deal with what's happening now so we have I, that remembrance right we yeah. have this the sacred document to look to and go wow mm -hmm. the intention was there mm -hmm. but then when you look at things now it's like how do we comfort ourselves into knowing and trusting that we will be okay. Because we are hooked in with that same div divine spirit that created that, that document. created that document. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. I could feel that answer coming. I could feel it. It's, That's good. It's, Good and answer. I think that, but that, I like that. But, but that brings it back to the whole, that is what's epic about the great story that we're in well i think it brings it like all the way it's us now i think it brings it all the way back to the top of the podcast where you said that this is our spiritual work because yes, part and, of yes and it's not just our spiritual work to trust that it's going to be okay but it's our spiritual work to make sure that it is okay right but, it, but it's also our greater spiritual work like if we take a broad stroke okay to just realize that we are part of this divine we have this divine nature in us, so mm -hmm. much so that we can shine in how this document, like this, this sacred document, is a wonderful example where divinity was channeled to write this beautifully, 
right? And maybe right now, there's a lot, there are a lot of people not coming from their divine selves. Right. 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 But it's part of our work. Like one of the broad strokes is to know that we are, we have this wonderfully greater part of ourselves, this divinity that lives and to do our work, our soul's work to stay tuned in, to tap in and stay tuned in, you know, and we're being called to come to the divine part of ourselves now. Like yeah. we, we oh, yeah. woke up. Yes. Yes. My God. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I really loved all of those thoughts, Toast. Great. Good job. And can I just put Good one job. cap on it? Thank you. Yeah. Do whatever you want. I just wanted to say, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that, you know how in a lot of our episodes and like all the self-help and personal development and all that stuff, there's all like, okay, so what do you do now? Right. Right. What are the tips? And so what do you do? You know what? There's too much to do. We all know what to do. Okay. (laughs) I wanted to just say that (sighs) I don't think this message that we talked about today about being a part of the greater story Mm -hmm. and having that real deep longing to be part of something worthy and good. That message is not primarily primarily about doing anything yeah it's primarily about just getting oriented yeah and getting some our place our place in the grand landscape yeah it's how it's regaining some clarity from a spiritual perspective about our lives and our Mm. lifetimes Mm -hmm. and the opportunity we have the responsibility we have the position and role that we have in history yeah as spiritual beings and if i have felt that if i get that orientation Mm -hmm. the emotions and the thoughts and the actions not more naturally just flow from that yeah so that alone is comforting having the perspective cultivating that perspective yeah because I can see that. Being in confusion and being disoriented Mm -hmm. is discomforting. And hopeless. And feeling hopeless. And therefore feeling hopeless, right? But if you get oriented, if you get get that space and perspective to get oriented and see clearly again, Mm -hmm. that that is comforting. Yeah. And we hope that that comforts you, dear listener. Well, you know, I think that... Okay, I'm not trying to give people something to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, Tosin and I had this really long conversation about how these days there is just so much going on. And yep, it's a fire hose ugh. of stuff yeah. going on. Even things to better yourself. Yeah. It's like it's mm-hmm. just everywhere. Mm-hmm. And even though some people may think our podcast is part of that, you know, our intention really is to just share what feels really good to us, share what we think might be helpful to some people. And listeners can do what resonates. They can do whatever they want. You guys can do whatever you want. And you know that. (laughs) They're like, of course I can. (laughs) But I want to say that, you know, one of the things that really ruffles my feathers when it comes to politics and talking about politics and all of that is that oftentimes I can get really caught up in the stories of what's going on and really lose sight of what you're talking about with this originating, this original sacred, sacred um, contract of sorts. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And if it keeps going on and on, like the whole Kavanaugh thing, then I start to f- feel really angry and really feeling a sense of hopelessness, mm. you know, mm-hmm. where I'm yeah. at, right? I am yeah. one person, right? So how do I affect? And I know that right. what has helped me is to realize that, you know, you don't always need to find a march to go to (laughs) or 
a petition to sign or who can you call, you know, a senator to call, even though all of those things are so helpful. Absolutely. I'm not saying that they're not. But short of those things, it's like or true, separate from those things, separate from those things. It's like truly realizing that as we each work on ourselves not in that way of like, oh, okay, I have more stuff to do. <laughs> but if we're just conscious every day, you know, we create our spiritual practice, we just truly uh, realize our connection to the divine and that greater divine part of ourselves. And we deeply, deeply, deeply <laughs> get that we are enough as we are. We are enough. We are worthy. And to really come from that space, only then I think we truly realize our impact on, on each other. Does that make sense? Because really, we're wired to connect with people. Right. So when we realize our impact, because I think one of the problems on a micro level is that we don't realize our impact on each other. We do. You know, I, so yeah, we feel, I, yes. Okay. So we, fe I think so I know we feel mean. alone. We just, or, or even if we don't feel alone, we think we're by ourselves. We think we're just going about our day, maybe our heads down. You know, we're not connecting with the people walking in the other direction on the street. Mm -hmm. We're not making eye contact, mm -hmm. you know, which is one of the things that we were delighted about um, when we moved to Portland. Like, wow, these people give great eye contact. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it's really, <laughs> as we realize that divine part of ourselves, we, we more deeply realize how much we are enough, how worthy we truly are. And with that comes impact. We can know our impact. And when we know our impact, we stand a little taller. We walk into situations knowing that I can make a difference just by connecting with this person standing right by me. Am I going to choose to engage? Or am I going to have my head down and be in my own little world? Right? Mm -hmm. Because right. that connection is the thing that ripples out. And that's what society is made of. Yes. Yeah. And we do not have enough of that. Yeah. We don't have enough of that. And I feel like, you know, that is reflected in the political state. The poverty of that. Yeah. 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 I think what you're saying is about deeply apprehending the value and the essence of what a person is. Yeah. Not just yourself, yeah. but other people too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, Seeing with those spiritual eyes. Yes. To, to see with that sense of graciousness and magnanimity, that yeah. sense of benevolence, and, and to feel that within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The divinity, like the contract. The divinity. The big D. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Did you guys find that comforting? I, I hope so. so. Did you just say that? Yeah, I me? wanted to copy you. <laughs> I said, I was thought, oh my God, you're going to say I hope so. Let me say it together. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Okay, well, stay tuned to next week. I hope you tune into next week's podcast. We're going to be talking about, oh, shoot. I thought next week was Thanksgiving. It's not. It's not. Okay. But you know, okay, so again, we don't know when you're listening to this. If it happens oh, to that's be true. later in election week, <laughs> which it might very well be, yeah. I just want to say, no matter what happens, our role and responsibility is the same. Yeah. This is our spiritual work. Yes. It is an honor and a privilege <sighs> and a deep, rewarding pleasure to do this work. Because yes. really, yes, deep down, is. deep, deep down... We cannot get rid of the fact and the truth that we all want to be part of a great story. Yes. We want to be part of something larger than ourselves. We want to be part of a great love. And if we embrace our place in history, we will realize that we already are. Yes. So. Absolutely. With that. Until <sighs> next time. This is Sienna. And this is Toast. And we're lifting our glass and telling you, love life, live free, and hope you voted. You better have voted. Yeah.